Hello, I'm John Adams, editor of Digital Photo, and welcome to this video lesson where we're going to look at how a sequence of shots can be cut out and composited into a background to create a colourful montage that shows the passing of time. We're going to take these lolly shots in various states of Thor and turn them into this, an arty creative montage that blends all the different pictures together. The lolly itself was captured indoors while playing a hairdryer over it to accelerate the melting process. And we used a sheet of colour paper behind the lolly because this absorbs the melt water and gives a nice colour to it. Once you've got your sequence of pictures, you need to make cutouts of the subjects. I'll do this on one of the shots, I'll pick lolly 3 for this example. But the cutout process is exactly the same for all of them. So we'll get started, we'll close down the ones we're not going to use. And if we double click the hand tool, we can get our lolly nice and big in the frame. Now, there are various ways of making cutouts, but all of them require you to make a selection first. And because we've got a fairly plain background and a different coloured subject, what we're going to use to start with is the quick selection tool. So we select that from the toolbox, and if you find it's grouped with the magic wand, you'll find down in the tool options bar where to get to the quick selection tool. There it is there. I'm using elements here, but in Photoshop you'll find the same options available if you click on the tool, mouse down on it, and you'll find from a flyout menu you can choose the appropriate tool. Now we'll get our lolly a bit bigger on screen, just by zooming in, that's control and plus on the keyboard. Now we can just extend those boundaries so we can see what we're doing. Right, with the quick selection tool selected, what we need to do is make the brush a little bit bigger than that, so I'll use the square brackets keys to up the brush size, but don't make it bigger than the lolly's stick. Then we can simply just click and drag along over the lolly and it will quickly select it. Hold down the spacebar to scroll around. We've got the main body of the lolly there. We want to get all the drips as well. So we can simply keep on dragging over the area and that will quickly select it and do a pretty good swift job. Now, the quick selection tool is fast, but it's not perfect. So often you'll have to go in and refine the selection a little bit around the edges. And if you need to do that, just click on the zoom tool, go in nice and tight, and then you can inspect your edges to see how good your selection really is. We'll just have a look around. That's pretty good. We've got this uh, rather ragged edge around here, though. So if you want to refine it, an easy way is to just select the lasso tool, and we'll pick the regular lasso, the freehand lasso tool there. And all we've got to do is hold Shift to add to a selection, or hold Alt to subtract from a selection. So if we hold down the Alt key and want to refine that edge a bit and tidy up that corner, we can simply go around like that, loop around it, release the mouse, and now we've removed that part from the selection. And if we scroll around by holding the spacebar, we may find other bits we want to get rid of, so just hold Alt, loop around it, and the job's nice and easy to do. So we'll quickly look all the way around the edge, just scrolling around, that all looks pretty good. The stick's nicely selected, and this area here too. Yeah, I think that'll be good there. If you want to make it a bit tidier, then you can, just using the lasso tool, and either the shift to add, or the alt key to subtract from the selection. So that's all good, we now double click the hand tool to take us back to full screen. Then what we'll do, we'll get the layers panel up on screen. Normally that's down the right hand side, if yours isn't there, just go up to window and click on layers, and it will appear. What we're going to do now, we have a firm selection surrounded by marching ants, what we're going to do is hit Ctrl and J, and that punches the selected area into a new layer. Now we can switch off the background, and you can see there's our cutout, nicely made and displayed on a transparent background. That's this checkerboard area here. Now that looks nice and clean, so what we can now do is delete the background layer. We don't need that anymore, so we can grab hold of the background layer and just drag it to the trash icon. And that leaves us just with layer 1, which is our lolly. Now to save that image in its current state, all you've got to do is go up to File and choose Save As, and save it in the PSD format. So save that to your hard drive as a PSD, and you'll get it up with that transparent background, so the cutout will be preserved. So we'll click on Save, and we'll now have Lolly 3 as a cutout without the background. And that's all you have to do for all your Lolly pictures. So make your selection, punch them into a new layer, delete the background, save as a PSD, and you're all set to move on to the compositing stage where we're going to make our montage. OK, for the montage itself, the first thing we need is a sheet of virtual paper. So we go up to File, New, and choose Blank File, or just File, New in Photoshop. Click on that, and you'll get a dialog box on screen. 
Now, I'm going to go for an A3 size print for this one, but you can choose A4 or whatever other size you want to use. So you can put in your measurements in here in pixels or centimeters or inches or whatever you want, or uh, you can simply select from the custom menu, choose international paper, and choose the size you want. I'll go for A3. That automatically puts in the sizes, sets the resolution to 300 pixels per inch, sets RGB color as the mode, and gives the background contents as white. You can change the background color if you want to, but I'm gonna leave it as white for the time being. So I'll click OK, and we get our A3 sheet of paper on screen. Now I want this to be horizontal format rather than vertical, so I'm simply gonna go up to Image, Rotate, and choose 90 degree right. That gives me a horizontal sheet of paper. Now I want a black background for my lollies, and the easiest way to go from white to black is simply hit Ctrl and I on the keyboard. That's a shortcut to invert the image, so it turns white to black, black to white, blue to yellow, red to cyan, or green to magenta. Whatever colour you have there, it will give you the polar opposite. So we've got a black sheet of A3 now, and what we need to do is get our lollies into that document. So leave that document on screen, and then go up to File and choose Open. Choose your first lolly click open and it will pop up on screen. What we need to do is select this lolly. So if you hit Control and A on the keyboard, then Control and C to copy it, then Control and W to close it down, you'll return to your background picture. Now all you've got to do is hit Control and V and you'll paste it straight in. And you'll see it appear there as a layer floating above the black background sheet that we've created. Now I'll just double click the hand tool to get that up a bit bigger. Then all we've got to do to move it around, just select the move tool, that's this one here, and you can shift it over to the left hand side. Next we need lolly number two, so that's file open. Double click on lolly two, which is your PSD cutout. Then once again, we just have to select it. So first of all, select the whole thing, that's control and A, control and C, control and W to close it down, and control and V to paste it in. There's number two. We have our move tool, so we can move that into position as well. And it's exactly the same process for all the other lollies, so I'll just quickly run through that. Let's file open. We'll get three. Control A, Control C, Control W, Control V. Then we'll get our last couple up. Number four. Control A, Control C, Control W, Control V. In goes four. And then the fifth one. File open. And we'll get number five in. And hopefully that sequence of keyboard shortcuts is nice and familiar now. Control A, Control C, Control W, Control V. And there we have all of our lollies, all in the same document, and all stacked on separate layers. All we've got to do now is arrange them to get a nice, elegant composition, but you can also resize them if you want to. At the moment, they look about the right size to me, but if you need to resize any of the lollies, just select the appropriate layer, layer 1, for example, which is this one here, then hit Control and T. This will bring up the free transform bounding box, and you can either hold the mouse outside that and turn them around to rotate them, or you can grab hold of one of these corner handles and change them in size. But I think they're already about the right size for what I want to do, so I'm just going to press escape to get out of the free transform mode. Okay, we'll put this one here, we'll click on layer 2, move that up a bit, and then we'll go to layer 3 and we're going to move that maybe something like there would be pretty good. Yeah, that looks nice. Number four, let's move that so it's a bit higher, perhaps invading the space of that one. Yeah, we're gonna blend those two together in a minute. And then number five, we'll just, uh, we want that to be on the edge of the image because we've got, that's the edge of our paper where the, uh, the puddle has dripped off. We'll keep that over onto that edge and I think something like that should be pretty good. Now you can fine tune and rearrange your composition and a good idea is to use the auto select layer option. You'll find that in the tool options bar at the bottom of the screen in elements or up at the top in Photoshop. Click on that. You can actually click directly on the layers and move them around as you see fit. So I'll just give them a little a little juggle around. Yeah, something like that. We'll get this one over. Yeah, I want that one separated and this one can go in its own space. Yeah, that looks pretty good there to me. And one really handy tip, when you have all your lollies arranged and you like how they are, you may find you want to make them a bit bigger overall on the canvas. And there's a neat trick you can do using the transform command. If you click on the first layer, which is layer 1, then you hold the shift key and click on the last layer, layer 5. Don't include the background, just the lolly layers. Then you can hit Ctrl and T to bring up the transform bounding box. And you can then change them in size all at once. So you can rearrange your composition like so and get the kind of look you're after.
And that looks pretty good there. So I'll double click inside that bounding box and that's the kind of arrangement I want. And then to release the layers from being joined together, just click on one of them individually and then you can uh, you know, use the move tool and move that around if you see fit. So yeah, we'll take that one down to around about there. Now one interesting thing you can do if you want to blend your lollies together is change the blending mode in the layers panel. So where we have overlaps of the puddles around the lollies, we can actually use a blending mode to make them blend with themselves. So what we'll do, we'll take layer 5 and we're going to click where it says normal and change the blending mode to screen. That will make the blended areas see-through. We've got layer 4 as well which is overlapping, so we'll change that to screen too. And we're getting a nice artistic blend between the lollies. But although the puddles look good overlapping, we don't really want the puddles invading the actual body of the lollies. Let me just switch off the auto select layer. There we go. And to avoid that happening, we can mask off those specific areas. So we're going to have some parts of layer 5, and some parts of 4, and maybe some parts of 3. So we'll start with layer 5 first, which is this lolly here. And then to add a layer mask to that, just click on this icon here in the layers palette. Click on that and you'll see a white rectangle appear. What we now need is a black brush. So if we grab hold of our brush tool, then we want to make black the foreground colour. To do that quickly, just hit D and then X on the keyboard and you'll get black as your foreground. Now we need to set a brush size and we can do that with the square brackets keys. So I'll just increase brush size. We can see it there on screen. Something like that should be okay to start with. And then we want to rub out the parts where layer 5 is crossing over layer 4 in this instance. So that's going to be here. We'll just hit Control and Plus to zoom in. And we want to get this stick standing proud of this gloop emanating from uh, lolly number 5. So all we have to do is mask it out. So we just paint over that area and I've got a 50% opacity set to give me a nice blend. So a few brush strokes will soon clean that up. If you get it wrong and go over the edge, don't worry, just hit X, that will swap your colours to white and then you can simply paint back in to restore that nice molten ice. I say molten ice, I think that's called water isn't it? But you know what I mean. There we go, we can just tidy up that edge and that looks good. Now we've got the stick lying on top of the puddle. Now if we scroll around, we'll now need to go to layer 4. We can create a mask for that as well just by clicking on the layer mask icon. And then with a black brush, so we'll swap our brush over, we can simply paint to show the, the firm body of the lolly and not have too much blend coming through from the gloop. There we go. And what we also need to do is get rid of this hard edge down here. So we'll just uh, work around that, perhaps with a smaller brush this time. I'll just reduce brush size with the square brackets key, the left square brackets key to go down, right square brackets key to go up in brush size. We'll just curl around that corner to make it look a bit more natural. That's the kind of thing. Then if we move across we have, well we've got another blend here, so we can simply paint that out and make sure the body of our lolly is restored. And a good tip when you're painting with a layer mask, if you just click in one area and you've got a fairly straight line to follow, hold down the shift key and click at the bottom of it and it will give you a straight line between the start and finish points. Now we can just blend that in, get a nice realistic looking result. Hold shift and click. There we go. Now if we double click the hand tool once more, we can see our whole piece of art on screen at once. We've got nice blends, we've got no crossovers between the body of the lolly, but we do have some nice arty crossovers where the puddles are blending and interacting with each other. And that's it. We end up with a wonderfully colourful lolly montage that demonstrates the passing of time and also gives an interesting series of blends where the puddles overlap. All right, we'll give that a try. It's a good excuse to buy yourself a box of ice lollies, take some shots as they melt, and then blend them together into an artistic montage packed with summer colours. All right, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.